The first time I was told to go back to where I was born, I looked the assaulter squarely in the eyes. Was that my first mistake? Afterwards, I thought I should have kept my head down for my sake. Then I would never have seen those eyes, sharp with so much hate that poisoned me, told me that I was second rate. I felt that pain more deeply than anything I had ever felt before, because I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that she despised my own shadow, the very imprint of my existence. She didn't even know my name. The first time I was told to go back to where I was born, the next thing I did was look around me for support. Was that my second mistake? I saw no faces, just wide eyes above taped mouths, whether from north or south, didn't matter. They were united against me, united in their silence. I know now that it's because silence is convenient. It gets you home quicker, no matter if it makes the world sicker, by all means please. Grab your toddler's hands and tell him to avert his eyes, the wonder why he ignores the victim's cries in his later life. Then step away from all blame, tell the media you did not raise your child that way. Go ahead, herd them away from the scene like a shepherd and his flock pretending you didn't clock, but remember who the real animal in this situation is. But I understand, children should be shielded from the ugly truth, right? Their fragile minds and delicate youth should be nurtured at least to the age of 13. Then who cares if they're harassed on the street? At least their childhood was beautiful. So until then, you must hide the ugly stain of the world, remove the red wine with the white, replace the black child with the white. I was a young girl fighting back tears harder than I'd ever fought before. And I have three brothers, so you'd best believe I can fight. I find it strange how I can be so despised for skin that is brown, how windows of passing cars are rolled down just so they can point out a difference I already know. So the first time I was told to leave the country, to migrate because my existence was just another weight burdening the country, I stayed silent. But that was my only mistake. Colour decorates and beautifies your surroundings. There is no such thing as black and white, only a million different shades of unity. Only perfection to be found in caramel brown and swells of peach. Unity isn't beyond reach if only we look for it. Yes, silence was my only mistake. So the next time someone told me I should go back to where I was born, I looked them squarely in the eyes. And I told them I was born and raised in London, mate.